Uh, morning for everybody. My name is Silan Hoffman. I'm from Mozambique. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for the committee organizer. And I'm here to present the, a study, socioeconomic impact of marine invertebrates collection at Shiba and Maringanya beaches in Mozambique, the north side. Okay, the outlines of the study. First, we have the introduction to the justification and the objectives, the description of the study area, the materials, the methods, and then we have the results, the discussion. After that, we have the conclusion. In the end, the recommendations. Okay, more than 80% of the population uh, in the Western Indian Ocean region lives in the coastal areas. In Mozambique, two-thirds of the population lives in the coastal zones, and the easy access to this area become the marine resources more vulnerable to the exploitation. So you don't need to do a lot of investments to get the marine resources, particularly in the intertidal area. The marine invertebrates are so very... Sir, is your microphone on? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Maybe you need to take... Okay. Bring it closer. To you. Okay, thank you. So, the marine invertebrates are very important for the livelihood of the coastal communities, particularly in Bemba City, where the study was conducted. So, why of this study? There are few studies reporting the socioeconomic impact of marine invertebrates collection in the local communities. The communities of the coastal area depend on the sea invertebrates animals to obtain the substances for this reason. It is important to know which are the uses, forms, and the coming benefits of the exploitation of these resources for the communities. This study, we believe that it can contribute with a baseline scientific knowledge which could be used to draw reduction programs to the poverty in our countries, as well contribute to the sustainable management of the sea and coastal resources. Okay, the objectives. To study the socioeconomic impact of the collection in marine, of marine invertebrates on Shiba and Maringaina communities, Specifically, specifically, we want to describe the profile of the collectors and the invertebrates collection activity. We want to estimate the monetary income of the collection activity and estimate the socioeconomic impact of invertebrates collection in Shuiba and Maringanya communities. So, here we got the, the, study, the, the study area. We got the, the coordinates and the climate. The temperatures range 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, we got the seagrass, the corals, the reef, the dunes, and the rock uh, ecosystems. So there is the Maringanya beach. It's close to the Pemba Bay. This side here is the Pemba Bay. It's close to the city. And here we got the Shriba beach a little bit further from the, from the city. Okay, this is the materials that we use, the GPS, the camera, the scale, and the field guide. We use to make a structured interviews for the collectors. We waste the sample along the intertidal area while we are collecting the data, and we use the, the guide to identify the species. Okay, to estimate the average income, uh, we, we use the average dial income per collector. It's equal to the capture multiplied by the total average price divided by the number of the collectors. The average monthly uh, income of the collector is equal to the uh, average monthly income multiplied by 15 divided by 2 because we know that the high tides per month, it happens in 15 days. So we try to divide it because we don't know as well if the, the, the collectors going frequently every single day 
to the intertidal area. Okay. Uh, to estimate the, aver the average annual income per collector, uh, it's equal to the uh, average monthly income per collector multiplied by 12, also divided by 2. Okay. Also, to estimate the economic impact per collector, we ask, it, we ask the collectors the uh, average daily income per collector minus the daily expenses of the collector during the day. Okay, here we have the results. We can see that 57.5% of the collectors inquired are female and 42.5% are male. I don't know if it's really visible here, but uh, in Shuiba Beach, we got more females than Maringaina Beach. Uh, about the male, we got more males in Maringaina Beach than uh, Shweba Beach, something like 42% uh, male for uh, Maringaya and 37% for, for Shweba. Okay, in terms of education and age of group of the collectors, we can see in terms of uh, age group that uh, the age starts from 9 to 48 years old and uh, we got it uh, uh, in 25 to 32 years old. We got more collectors, and uh, also we got more collectors in the 17 to 24 years old on uh, Maringanya beaches. Also, we got children, you see the age here, 9 to 16 years old. In terms of education, uh, we can see there that we got. Uh, a lot of not studying collectors and uh, also we got in Maringanya uh, we got a uh, secondary education level for the collectors and the primary level in Shriba and uh, Maringanya are just something like 15 to 20 percent okay what about the income sources of the collectors in Shriba and Maringanya I'm trying to bring here uh, the activities that they are doing. So, uh, we got here uh, in Shweba, 60% uh, of the collectors, they are practically ag agriculture, and uh, in the uh, Maringanya, only 26% make agriculture. So, in terms of collection, Maringanya have 55% of collection activity, the main activity, and in Shweba, 30% of the people doing the collection. Okay, uh, I think that is not really, really important, but uh, this is the, the employed members in collector's family that can bring more income different from agriculture and the collection and other, other activities. Uh, we can see here 19% for, for, for Maringanya and 10% for Okay, the collecting activity, we can see here the species that the normally uh, the, the collectors catch. It's a commercial species in Shriba and the Maringanya. So in Shriba we got the Olutures or sea cucumbers in something like uh, more than 20 kilos. Uh, after that, we got the Adrena Vergilium uh, with 10 kilos per capture. And the Autopus vulgaris also is a species that we, it's a commercial in Shriba. And uh, in Maringanya, we got the, the Spraya Nullus uh, with 45, more than 45 total kilos captured, and uh, also the Oluturias. The Autopus vulgar is not very common there. Okay, now we got uh, the income from the community collectors in Shiba. So we got a lot of numbers here, but uh, we must be attentional for this. Uh, we got here the prices in US dollar of the, all, all these species, and also we got the quantity collected per day, the average quantity 
uh, collected per month and the quantity collected per year. Also, we got the average income here in this column per day, the average income per month and per year. So we can see that uh, uh, the cheapest species is the Lambis Lambis and the expensive species here is the Spraya Rufia. So uh, the Octopus vulgaris is the very one that is expensive also. But uh, the most important here, we must repair to we must repair to the average income per day. So the collectors of Autopus vulgaris got more income per day, something like 13.4 US dollars per day. And the cheapest one is the Lambis Lambis with 0.2 US dollars per day. So the average income per year in, for all the total species something like 844.7 US dollars. In terms of quantities per year we can see that it's something like 705.2 kilograms per year for total species. Okay? About the Maringanya collectors the income is made for the community of collectors in Maninganya. We can see that uh, the sea cucumbers, the sea cucumbers are the most expensive species. It costs something like 3.1 US dollars. And the Spraya tigris is the cheapest one. Uh, the average income per day is 17. 17 US dollars for the sea cucumbers per collector uh, and uh, the spray annual is something like 0 0.6 US dollars. It can bring an income for the collectors of sea cucumbers per year, something like 766.6 US dollars and the spray tigers can bring per year for the collectors 24.9 US dollars. Okay, the minimum range of the daily income per collector is 0 0.223 US dollars. And the maximum is 13 to 17.4 US dollars. Approximately the same results was funded, uh, was funded in Zanzibar. A study conducted by Lina Nordland in 2010. Okay, the monthly income for the invertebrates collect animals is smaller than the measure of the monthly minimum salary that it doesn't exceed the 2.5 thousand metrics, something like 17, uh, 79 rand, uh, sorry, US dollars. About the daily media expenses, the family attached at the national and the second level residence areas show as the a daily medium expenses per person is something like 112.3 metric cash, something like 3.8 US dollars per day. As we can see here in this graphic, we can see that in Shuiba, the average income collector in US dollars and the daily food expenses per family are variable. We can see that, uh, the, for example, uh, in the here, here we got the daily expenses food per family. It's less than the average income per collector and also the number of the persons in family, in family are very high. We can see that the families here got something like six, six to ten members per family. Other families got ten members. So we can see that the, in Shweba, particularly in Shweba, only the collectors of octopus can feed themselves because the prices of, of octopus are very high. But other species 
like a spray and noodles are very cheap and they cannot feed the family. And the diet income in back of the invertebrates collection in the in Maringanya, as we can see here, those collectors here got a lot of daily income per day. Also, they can feed the family. But there are other people, there are other collectors that cannot feed the family. You can see here, for example, you can see here that they cannot feed the family because the income, the daily income, it's uh, the daily income. It's uh, less than the daily food expense for family, and also they got a lot of people in the families. The socioeconomic indicators in Shui by Maringan. Okay, in Cabo Delgado, more than 80 percent of the construction houses uh, use mangrove poles, and 89 percent it's covered with with straw. Also, we can see here these indicators that we use the mangrove poles in Shriba houses is something like 19, 19 houses in Maringanya, 21 houses. Okay? And uh, there is a picture of that can show us the kind of houses that uh, we have in Shriba and Maringanya houses. Basically, it's made by poles and covered with straw. The social, the social impacts. Uh, according to Sina 2009, the collectors become more and more poor, falling in a species uh, that calls himself power trap. Why it's calling uh, power trap? Because the collectors normally they got a, a lot of time to exploit the intertidal area, and uh, uh, the mothers and the fathers take the children to intertidal area. We saw that on that graphic, they are not studying, they spend a lot of time in the intertidal area. So, uh, it's called a power trap because the fathers are doing the collection. And the children also are going to do the collection. The children of the children, it's becoming something, they are going to pass the, 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 in generation to generation. That's the reason that Sina calling the poverty trap. Okay, therefore, under the social the social point of view, it can be verified that the relation uh, to the collection, there is a large involvement of the members of the family as a form to contributing for the family income. So, uh, normally they are going to enter to that area, entire family, to get more invertebrates than can feed themselves and also that can sell. Under the literacy point of view, this. Uh, uh, and school uses a week can be observed that a large part of the interview doesn't study and the uh, ones that frequent the school per times lack the school to the in detriment of this activity of collection. Okay. The, con the, the collection activity is part it's practiced by adults and young women, also children of both sets. Uh, generally, they use the hands and the pots for collect. We see that the silver cumbers and autopus vulgaris collection obtain a large income than the daily medium expenses uh, per family of 112.3 meticash, something like 3.6 US dollars, according to the YOF. Socially, there is a large involvement of the member of the family to contributing. I already talked about that. Uh, the, this activity influences neg negatively in the formal education of the collectors. The collectors spend the most of the value obtained buying alimentary products. Okay, recommendations. Studies can be accomplished more deeply by form to obtain uh, more social, economic, and environment, environmental information guaranteeing a, bit, a better administration of the sea and the coastal resources. Okay, another recommendation to be created alternative activities inland for the communities living in the coastal areas. Uh, the parents and the government must play a very important role to motivate the children and um, the children and the, the students to frequent the school. 
The last recommendation is to be established a collector's association as a form to guarantee the co-management and sustainable of the sea resources. Okay, this is the pictures. This ugly guy here is myself trying to sell an octopus. Okay, thank you.